are finally back. All right. So. Uh, it's gonna be fun. I think <laughs> that little break is gonna mess with my uh, my my editing workflow, but whatever. Should make it better. Okay. So. Uh, what was it doing? <laughs> Before I was so rudely interrupted by uh, my encoder crashing and the stream going down and taking a break. Um, so we were going to fix this. So we re-added the playlist in this video. We're going to go back to Glowing Telegram. We're going to let it reload. Uh, we're going to go into episode 66. And I'm going to just go through the workflow again to see if it's going to actually work. Let me double check that I'm logged in. I think one issue with this whole process right now, especially some of the stuff I had been working on where like if the upload fails, it will wait or not if it fails, but if we, if it fails because of API quotas, it will wait at, you know, for the quota to come back. The issue is, is that the, um, the login, like the session, expires well before, <laughs> well before um, the quota comes back. So that part of things may be kind of doomed. Um, one thing that I, I have been thinking about Kind of a, a different workflow would be one where like i produce the video files and then i drop them in youtube and then i use the api to link the episode record here to the videos i drop because like if you go into like the youtube studio and you like upload videos you can just drop files and there aren't the same kind of limits like i could drop like a bunch of videos in here and they would upload um, and that would kind of work around some of those API limits. All right, so we're gonna get rid of this stuff for now. Uh, join me. Another informative and relaxing Sunday morning coding session as I continue working on the Glowing Telegram project in this episode. Focus. Error handling and implementing functions in Rust, performance configuration upload statuses, exponential back off. Watch as I navigate. Um, yeah, I should really just change the prompt a little bit to clarify how I want things phrased, but uh, that's what I get. I think we will probably not do another full hour. Uh, getting a lunch order in right now. Um, don't forget to check out my Twitch channel for more live coding sessions. Yeah, we'll do that. And then I want to grab the new standard thing here. Let's see if that makes a difference. Yeah, so save that. That is a little under 100 characters, right? All right. Validation happens on Blur. Okay, cool. So that's episode 66. Um, and then the other thing that I want to implement impl blah, 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 implement next is toggling is published. I think the that toggle is slightly misleading because it's not really is published, it's is uploaded. Um, what I probably should do is instead of having this toggle, have the, uh, ooh, yeah, let me actually add that. So this is active. When we when we work on this, I'm gonna change, um, what this task is here have a couple of objectives. Um, 
add field in episode record. YouTube video ID 32. So why maybe two? Well, I'm thinking that I might want, ooh. what if I want to upload it to multiple places? I could make something more complicated where I have like some relational model where it's like here is like uh, like um, media file proxy things where it's like here's the episode and here is um, another thing. But I don't think I'll do that. Uh, location. Do I let me look at the schema for episode right now. What's that in here? Topics, video clips, episodes. Yeah. Uh, category tab. By subscribers is published. I think is published is just going to go away. Um, thumbnail URL, title, description, track, series, order. Where am I? Oh, render URI. There we go. Yeah. So this is where I'm storing like the location of where the, the actual media I want to upload as the episode gets rendered out from the edit is stored. So what I could do is I could have a more generic thing where I have a separate, I could, you know, I could have like a JSON column, like a JSONB column here. I could do various things. It's so like model, here's an episode and here's like all of the media and like where it's stored and those sorts of things. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to have another column. And if I want to have it uploaded somewhere else, I could do that. If I want to represent the idea of archiving the rendered episode, I probably am not going to do that. Like, I don't keep these videos around after I upload them to YouTube. I have the original source um, videos, and then I have the track data that tells me what the edit was from, give or take, because I do manually edit that without editing um, that, that track data, but that's a separate issue. Anyway. Um, Add uh, endpoint to uh, YouTube uh, module, call it, to um, no, 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 add uh, chained task to call uh, episode update. Um, another thing that occurs to me is that the playlist date playlist um, ask response to response to mirror the Upload one to also have the video ID, right? The idea being that if we have something where we trigger the, the upload task and then it triggers the, the add video to playlist task and that response can then be the input to um, third task which will be to update the episode with that video ID if we aren't adding it to a playlist and we're just uploading a direct video which is an option um, we will get the output the, 
video ID payload from the first task to the update episode call. So the, the, um, what should I call it? The, the adding video to playlist response needs to mirror that same, um, output because that becomes the input of that third task or second task. Yeah. So anyway, so that, that's the thinking there. Um, and then what else? I think that's it. I think for now, so here's a question. Uh, remove is published. Uh, update front end, front end, end uh, to use new field. So I think I want to do that. That's going to be cleaner rather than having like duplicate information where we have is published is published. And then we have this other field. One is published as misleading and two we'll have this other field that will represent whether or not the, it has a YouTube video ID. So I think that's fine. So that'll be the next thing to do. So the question is, um, the changes I just made, did I trigger a build? Yeah, I think I did. Did I? Or what was the change I just made? Not here. Here? I think it did trigger a build because the build and then trying to do stuff in Firefox, I, some combination of things resulted in the, uh, the stream crashing. So maybe it works now? Right, that's what I was doing, right? So I was gonna get this other video, episode 66, ready to be uploaded. So I have a description. I have my little links on the, the, the bottom there. Um, and then this is now kind of duplicated. Join me for another informative, relaxing, yada, yada, yada. Yeah, it seems fine. Save. Uh, episodes six, upload to YouTube, Let's see if this works, it's processing. All right. So this will be a minute before we see whether it gets all the way through. Do I want to, let me, let me just go ahead and assume that everything's going to work. And we're going to commit, I'm going to commit what I have. So here's what I've changed, right? So we added this YouTube playlist, add task endpoint, um, added a bunch of what changes, <laughs> basically everything in the stream today, uh, changed around a bunch of things, uh, fix the issue where we were not getting the previous task ID and, uh, saving it to Redis. I guess here's a question. Are we, are we reading it back out? So here's where we're going the opposite way where we have a hash map. And we're trying to read that into a task or, okay. We are getting previous task ID, putting it in there. This one would be harder for, for me to miss just because, um, Russ is going to check that we're putting all the keys that are supposed to be in task. Whereas there's not really anything we can do to check that we're calling all the right, we're passing all the right things to HM set. Um, so I'm going to see if a uh, co-pilot can generate us a better commit message. V add route for, okay now. I'll just use this one. Publish that. Um, and yeah, it's thinking. All right, new pull request. Sign to me. Let's create a normal pull request. I think it's it's basically there. 
I won't enable auto merge. Um, maybe someday I'll have a, a sophisticated test suite that will be able to check that everything works and then I just count on checks here being the only thing to gate that, but I, I do want to see this actually going all the way through, which will be a minute. If I go back here, we should have 66. There it is. Um, but the, the actual upload of the binary content of the video has to happen uh, before it will then trigger the payload, uh, the playlist adding. Yeah. There. You know, one task completes and then the next one starts. So hopefully that will work. Um, that. Do I want to start working on the next thing? I think, I think we're gonna, we're gonna um, pause here. Because the food should be here soon. Um, and it'll take us a few minutes to find someone to go raid. that's what I will do and either how long does this take 556 huh refresh huh oh I hadn't considered something uh how is my quota doing <laughs> are we are we maxed out have we used the quota for today? No, no, no. Only, only 32%. Okay. So this should complete. Um. Yeah, I do need to think about what. Maybe there's a way. I have to think about that a little bit. If, um, so the, the issue I think I brought up um, a few minutes ago is that like if this was a quota issue and this was not going to actually work until tomorrow, um, which looking at the preview of the stream, I, I realized the chat is like overlaid over, <laughs> over that. Hold on. Uh, where is chat? Chat this this thing um the issue is that if the um if it was a quota issue it would retry tomorrow sure but i would not still be logged in and then it would just fail right um i i I'm going to really have to seriously consider. Um, maybe we can think about like a version two of this. Like I, I think I've already said before that um, like this UI is just like an admin interface for this. So they can test various things and just like have a crud way to get at the data. But I do want to build a UI with like a workflow for this stuff. Um, and so the, I don't know. I mean, there's ways to like, you know, address this issue of like, okay, well, if we're not authenticated, we could just pause the task and then, ooh, we could have like a, a, a paused state on the task is kind of a retry thing. And then push that as a status notification. And then service that in the UI to like take action. That could be a thing. 
that's an option. The other thing I'm thinking about though is that it's it's very appealing to me as someone who has used a lot of uh, like AWS step functions. Like a lot of this work is like you can do like do this and do this and if this fails, you know, do retries, um, do like a manual no like notify someone that they need to take action, get confirmation, and uh, do long running tasks that are automated and that kind of workflow stuff um, is really nice to do with set functions, especially now they get some tooling for that. Um, but then I would probably want to again, like move stuff to like Lambda or uh, AWS batch. And that would be a whole thing. Um, something I'm familiar with doing, but something that would be kind of involved um like we basically be throwing away the, the the whole tasking system which whatever it's there to serve a purpose right so if it if we can do something better that's fine uh something that better suits the purpose then we can do that okay someday someday this will happen uh oh right right now right now that will happen all right and then it thinks add video to playlist completed. Processing. Uh, we got a lot of events in rapid order down here. Processing. Uh, it failed. Okay. So something else went wrong. What could it be? Uh, who could say? Probably the logs. The logs could say. Uh, video ID not found. Okay. So. The previous task data is still empty. That. Oh, failed to parse previous task ID. Invalid digit found in string. Failed to parse. Copy. So we got to here. This is in our code that tries to convert the hash map. So what we got from Redis back into a task. Colon, let's see. Where did that message go? Validation of string. Okay, so that was the error. Uh, oh shoot, I closed Redis. So we'll just do a little, little bit more investigation. Where's my food? Oh, heading this way. Okay, so maybe future me can look at the end of this stream and remember where I was. Uh, and we can do that investigation next week. Next stream tomorrow, uh, modded Minecraft in the afternoon slash evening. But for now, let's go find someone to raid.